Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have the Toro in for some repairs. That was uh, much needed. I knew when I purchased this machine that it had some issues. Uh, I got it for a little bit of money. I didn't spend much on it at all. And um, typically people are scared of um, problems if they don't know how to fix them. So um, let me get you over here to the bench and I'll show you what the issues are. Okay, so uh, basically this is your axles which drive the rear roller to propel the mower forward. This is a drain plug to uh, drain the fluid and you have a fill plug over here to fill the transmission with transmission fluid. Um, these little hoops right here is where your cables connect to. So you have a cable that connects here, which this is your um, reel engagement. So when the cable's here and you pull the cable, it will engage the reel. Over here on this side, there's a cable that attaches right here. And this is what actually um, engages the self-propelled. When you pull the cable here, it twists this gear back. And that's what propels, uh, engages the gears to make the mower go forward. And then down here on the bottom, you have another cable that attaches and that's just your um, parking brake and this is where it attaches to the engine so let me get this case opened up and I'll show you what the problem is now I can make a two hour long video about all the parts and mechanisms in this transmission and how it works and the different names and this and that but I want to just show you the basics and show you that if you find a mower at a good price don't be scared if it has issues. Uh, people tend to think these are really complicated and they're actually not. It's pretty straightforward. So um, basically there was just bolts that hold this case together. There's, these are sealed so that uh, fluid doesn't leak past like the axle and these different shafts. But you undo all the bolts and you, and you split this case in half. Now without going into a ton of detail I can explain to you how this works. This is um, a wear part this is a clutch and you see like the clutch material on it and there's also a clutch in here um, this is your uh, engagement for the actual reel and if you see over here I can show you kind of how it works when you pull on the cable it pushes uh, down on this and that's what engages the clutch there's some clutch material down there as well but I'm going to show you actually what's wrong with this transmission and it's fairly simple so you take this whole thing out here. This is um, this band right here. When you pull the um, the lever to engage the self-propelled, it tightens on this clutch material and it stops this gear from pulling. Um, basically, all of this is spinning, but when you stop one, it'll engage and drive other gears, which will turn the rear axles and propel propel the mower forward. Um, let me show you what's actually wrong with this. When you take this band out here. You can, you can pull this whole pack out. This is your parking brake band. Okay, but look at the clutch material here. You see how thick it is along the edge and how thin it is right here? And that's because of the wear over time of engaging it. And this slips a little bit and over time it wears this clutch material out. That's the only thing wrong with this mower. That's why it doesn't go when you engage the drive. Um, all you have to do is pull this clip out and you can pull this whole clutch piece off and put a new one on, put the clip back in, and then put this all back together. Now, unless there was catastrophic damage to this, everything else should be fine. If you look at all the teeth on the gears, they're all good, they're clean, they're sharp, there's no wear on any other gear. Um, while you have this apart, I would recommend replacing your seals. And there's bearings, a couple of bearings inside of here. Check those. And if they're good and they don't have any wear, you don't have to fool with them. But there was clutch material all inside of here from the wear and tear on that. And this part's about $125. So if you can get a machine that someone doesn't want to fool with or they're too scared to fool with it, and you can buy a machine at a, a cheap cost, then for little money and little labor, you can have a really good operating machine for cheap. Um, I'm going to show you how this real engagement works. So you pull this shaft out here, it's splined because as you, the, the cable pulls, it twists and applies pressure to this. But you take this out. Now there is a cone-shaped clutch in here. You can't see it unless I took this all apart, but the same clutch material that's on this gear, there's a cone shaped in here. So when you engage the reel, it gets pushed together and grabs and spins 
and that's what engages your reel. So if this clutch material wears out and you engage the reel and it, the reel doesn't engage, it's because this is just slipping in here. It's got to have clutch material to grab and turn. So I would recommend once you take this apart, you might as well just replace both clutches in this machine. And they're not that expensive. And basically it's just got a ring right here, a snap ring. You take that off and you can pull all this apart, put a new clutch in and put it back together. Okay, so I'm going to show you this clutch in here. Remove that. Now obviously you would keep all your parts in order. See there's needle bearings, there's some shims and spacers. There's a keyway right here. But, but this is the actual clutch, this material right here. And that's why I was telling you it was a cone shaped. It's tapered. But that's all you have to replace. See, there's more shims and needle bearings. I mean, you could break this down and you'd have a million parts, but um, take as little apart as you have to to get to the wearable parts and replace just those. So what you would do is clean all of this out really good because you don't want any of this material in here. And there's needle bearings in that one down there. So you would clean all of this out, check all your bearings, replace your seals, replace your clutch stuff, and put it back together. And this is the differential and it's very similar to how a car or a truck differential is and it's spline just like a rear end in a truck or a car but all these gears are in excellent shape there's no wear and tear on them the only thing wrong with this was the clutch and as you see it's really not that difficult to understand. You don't have to be a mechanic to fix stuff like this. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. As you can see, it's just the clutch was worn out. You can see exactly where this band, as it tightens up to engage the mower and drive forward, it was slipping. So the mower wasn't moving forward. That's all this is. There's bronze bushings in here. You can check for wear on those because bronze is soft material. But basically, when you put this back together, you line it all up. This would go back in. Sometimes you have to take a hammer, but that would all line up. This go back together in here. It's really a pretty simple machine. Honestly, the worst part was getting this transmission out of the mower. It was a uh, Quite a fight to get it out but yeah you would put all this back together the case would go back on you would have new seals fill it full of transmission fluid get it all bolted back together and you'd have a pretty much new machine okay so i hope this gives you a little bit of insight on how these um, gear cases operate and how they work to where if you're going out and you're looking for a machine to buy this will give you some confidence in buying one that may need some repair to where you can save a lot of money and get a good deal on a machine. As you've seen today, um, unless something catastrophic happens inside this gear case, more than likely the two clutches are the only wearable parts. Um, and that may not even be the case. If you have a real mower that isn't going when you engage the drive, it could be as simple as a, uh, a cable stretched out or not adjusted properly. But if you have a little bit of knowledge like I showed you here today, then you could diagnose and um, process of elimination. You can about figure out what needs to be done to get that machine operating properly again. And um, hopefully this will show you how the inside works to where you have a little more confidence to determine that. But um, once I get the part, I will make a new video and we'll put this back together, get it back installed in the machine, and hopefully we'll be mowing again. But um, we are in September here in Georgia, so uh, it's getting to the point to where the grass is slowing down, the leaves are starting to fall. It's still hot outside, but the grass just isn't thriving because I think we have cooler nighttime temperatures and less daylight. It's getting dark around 8 o'clock now. So um, now is a perfect time for me to try to get this machine going so that it'll be ready for when we need to start mowing again. So hopefully this helped you out and you gained a little knowledge and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.